Okay, so this is one of the few pictures of Philip which is available widely. It is in the collection of uh, Oberwolfau, where there are many uh, pictures of mathematicians. This one has been taken in Bonn, uh, 1967. So certainly I was not there because I was a first year student at Ecole Polytechnique at that time. But I'm sure that uh, with Philip, uh, uh, we met a number of times for the Arbeitstagung in Bonn, because this is really one of the places where mathematicians would meet. At that time, in a sense, uh, Bonn uh, was uh, one of the places where mathematicians all around the world would meet, more than Paris, actually. And uh, so uh, I think uh, definitely, if I want to be sure at the place where I met Philip for the first time, it was to one of the Arbeitstagung. But then just to give you a, a typical situation in which I really exchange with uh, Philip extensively, it is this conference. So first of all about this conference, maybe few of you know that the year 2000 was the World Year of Mathematics. It was due to the fantastic dedication of uh, Jacques-Louis Lyons, who managed to convince that there were 2000 should be the world year of mathematics. But then why do I show this? It's, um, you see the logo there. Logo has been designed at IHS by Marie-Claude Verne. She won the comp international competition for that. So it was for the Institute a very good sign of uh, capacity of being visible worldwide. Anyway, I want to talk about this conference. So this conference was organized by the American Mathematical Society in August 2000 in uh, Los Angeles, at, and uh, it was uh, called the Mathematical Challenges of the 21st Century. At that time, Philip was the head of mathematics at the National Science Foundation, and then uh, it was definitely uh, very natural for him to attend such a conference. And I, basically, we attended this conference, both of us, sitting next to each other for almost every lecture, and we discussed the lectures, which ones would be important, what are really the new path, and so on. Particularly, I remember the insistence of Philip to say, the next will be data analysis. And I can tell you, in 2000, this was not obvious at all. And, uh, but he kept saying that. So the, the list, I continue the list of speakers, don't look at them. A few of them are professors at IHS, like Alain Kohn or Maxim Konsevich. Um, but um, the thing I want to show you about this conference, these speakers, don't look at the speakers. I don't know how the selection committee worked, but if you look among the speakers, in black you see people who got either the Apple Prize or the Show Prize. So this is the first half, this is the second half. It's pretty good for a selection committee that about one half of all speakers got one of the most prestigious prizes created a few years after that. The Abel, the Abel Prize was created in 2003, and the uh, Cho Prize was created in 2004. So it's a kind of an amazing uh, situation. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to, to show you. But one thing also I want to, to share with you is the, the smile of of Philip, which was taken during the European Congress in Madrid in 2006. And um, I'm not the person sitting next to him, the person sitting next to him is Ari Lapkev. But uh, this uh, way of trying to convince you, as you see in this picture, is definitely something I shared and took advantage with many, many conversations. In particular, during the time Philip was the head of NSF in, uh, in uh, Washington. And I know that uh, Natalie remembers our visits to the NSF du during the, this time. Now I come to Jim and Marilyn, whom I met, uh, as uh, was mentioned by Philip. I met Jim uh, in 72 for the first time. And he, he brought me to Stony Brook in a very difficult family decision. Because on the 15th of June, I had an invitation to take a job in Stony Brook for the 1st of September. Well, uh, we decided, our daughter, Veronique, who is here, was already born, let's go. And at that time, I said, the department in Stony Brook was completely extraordinary. There were 14 differential geometers in the f on the faculty, among them uh, Jeff Cheeger, Xing Tung Yao. Blaine was not yet there, 
came a bit later. Marie-Louise was not yet there. She came a bit later. And, uh, but still, uh, I mean, the, the seminar in differential geometry, Detlef Grommel was there, uh, Wolfgang Meyer, uh, Charlap was there, uh, Axe, John Thorpe was there. It was incredible, John Milson and, and so on. So the, definitely this year in the, in the US was very, very important for me. One of the reasons is that after some time, I realized that uh, maybe differential geometry, as I was taught by Marcel Berger, was definitely a good subject in which one could do good mathematics. I had doubted a little bit because the spirit at that time in France was a little bit, if you were not doing algebraic geometry or number theory, you're not really a mathematician. So anyway, after all, I, I thought maybe I can still do mathematics. And so that was the, my first encounter with, uh, with Jim. And then uh, later on, there was another instance, uh, actually in, on that year, the spring of 73, which was very, very important, which was the attempt because uh, Cien Yang was a professor of physics in the, in the physics department at Stony Brook. And then he suggested there should be a seminar jointly between mathematicians and uh, physicist on gauge theories, which was a new topic coming on. But after three meetings, we decided there was really nothing to be done because uh, mathematicians were obsessed by global questions and physicists were obsessed by local questions and there was nothing to do. So we stopped. And if actually, just a few years later, it became a very, very hot topic because finally people recognized they had really something to do together. And on this, that was another opportunity to meet uh, Jim because uh, with Blaine Lawson, we provided a, a result which uh, quite a number of people were, were looking for. And we were inspired by some work of uh, Jim. And we offered him a possibility that the announcement in the Proceeding of National Academy of Science would be signed by Jim, Blaine, and myself. And uh, Jim first said, no, but I didn't contribute to your paper. But said, no, but you inspired us. At that time, Jim was not a rich person. He was, he was just about to leave mathematics. But uh, I know he appreciated this uh, willingness on our part to recognize his inspiration. And we did publish the announcement with the three names. So that was my second critical moment with Jim, of course. By the way, during the summer of 73, I also computed for him the second variation of churn simons functional, but that was an exercise. Uh, he was struggling with it, so I, I could do it. But um, so this has been repeated meetings later on. And of course, because Jim had been, and Marilyn have been so generous to support mathematics altogether, in particular IHS, and then they really contributed fantastically to the development and uh, capacity of the institute to really uh, have uh, more stability by having more uh, investors in, uh, in its uh, function. So to all of you, uh, thank you so much for what you've done to support uh, the institute and, uh, and in particular how much you changed my life because you in the case of Jim, it really completely changed my landscape in terms of mathematics. And in the case of, um, of Philippe, for sure, we had this uh, long uh, conversations repeatedly, but each time uh, I was impressed by your vision and all American mathematicians should remember what you did when you were the head of mathematics at NSF which uh, ended up more than doubling the budget of mathematics because you convinced um, uh, really uh, the director of NSF at that time and that really mathematics should be a priority for the NSF, which it was not, but then it became. So the second part of my speech today will be uh, dedicated to the issue of uh, the role of um, permanent professors at IHS and more generally permanent professors in, uh, in the research institutes. I must say that if you look at the extraordinary history of the institute, definitely uh, it was shaped by its permanent invited. They were not alone, they were uh, indeed um, inviting, inviting a number of people 
and they were supported by a number of students or more senior collaborators. But for sure, the choice which has been made initially by the founders of the Institute to really um, attract to the Institute absolutely uh, extraordinary mathematicians made the difference. And so it shows that having the capacity to attract uh, people um, in their most creative period on a permanent chair makes a difference. And therefore, the donation which had been made by Claire Lise and Philippe on one hand, and uh, Marilyn and Jim on the other hand, to create a new permanent chair is definitely an extraordinary contribution for the future of an institute. Because it's exactly by, with this type of uh, profile that the institute has a chance of being different and therefore to being, uh, continue to have a significant influence on the development of mathematics. But when we talk about mathematics, I, must, I want to insist for myself to the importance for the institute to have two legs. One is mathematics, the other one is theoretical physics. And I think the necessity for the institute to have both fields properly represented with permanent professors is absolutely fundamental. So the first chair is with bears my name, which for which I'm extremely honored, a bit uh, humbled, um, is definitely going to a mathematician, but there is no limitation to that. So it could happen. Of course, I hope you stay all your career, so, so you will be here for a long time. But uh, uh, I appreciated very much the generosity that uh, there was no strings attached to who could get the chair person should be just the best pers possible person for the Institute, which I think is very, very important. So just to insist on the originality of the Institute, of course, its format is very peculiar. It's small. It's definitely by uh, definition, uh, people uh, should be who are getting permanent professors should be different, should have really a fantastic uh, potential and particularly the potential of reshaping parts of the, their field. Could be mathematics, could be theoretical physics. I must say that if you look back at the people who have been here, uh, it has been uh, actually extraordinarily successful from that point of view. And, and therefore, we, uh, the, the whole responsibility of the directors, uh, Emmanuel at the moment, is to make this extraordinary path continue. But it has to continue to be extraordinary because the only reason for institute of this kind to exist if they are really different. And therefore, the, what makes the difference always are people. So you have to identify the right people. You have to convince them to stay. So Dustin, I hope you stay here. And you know, in the history of the institute, some stayed very long, some stayed not so long. But I think uh, it's uh, extremely important to have this uh, possibility that is to have the means to support people properly. Of course, things have changed a lot since the creation of the Institute. Uh, maybe to remind you uh, the situation uh, when IHS was created in 1958, mathematics uh, was not in bad shape in France, but not so much in Paris. Most of the great mathematicians were not in Paris. They were in Strasbourg, they were in Nancy, they were elsewhere. They came to Paris later. In physics, if I, I, my opinion is more or less copied from what Louis Michel told me, that uh, he felt that the physics was so bad in France that if you wanted to be trained properly at that time, I'm going back to the 50s, you better go to a different country. And Louis Michel was trained uh, in the UK, some others were trained in the US, but the feeling of many physicists, the young physicists, was that really the good physics was not done in France which was not good. And of course, Aichi has played a role in this um, re reconnection of uh, the French mathematics and, and um, French physics with the highest possible levels. IHS, of course, is a small place, so its contribution is also connected to its size. But in the end, I think it led to a really a remarkable redevelopment of mathematics and physics in France and I think IHS played an uh, important role because it uh, was possible to invite in France uh, remarkable people, 
By the way, tangentially to IHS, I would like to mention a little bit here Cécile de Witt Moret. She played a very important role at some point to connect Leon Mochan, who wanted to create IHS, with uh, Robert Pine Oppenheimer in uh, IS in Princeton. And uh, at that time, she dreamed, because she married an American, to really give a chance for French physics to redevelop. And she created the center, which is now called Les Ouches, which has been a, an extraordinary place to train uh, physicists in France and to bring to France the absolute best physicists in the world. And at some point, initially, the idea would be that uh, Les Ouches would be the summer location of IHS. Finally, it didn't happen. IHS developed independently. Les Ouches developed remarkably well, thanks to the extraordinary dedication, dedication of Cécile. But uh, it's interesting to see that two remarkably successful institutions were born with a similar spirits, namely to try to be uh, different and try to develop things uh, with uh, their own internal logic, independently of the system which was in place. So Les Ouches has been very successful. I think IHS has also been uh, very successful. Uh, but again, it came from the determination and the vision of people who thought that this uh, institution could, in the end, develop. For HES as a foundation, of course, very critical of finding the financial resources. That's why the, the Institute has been so grateful to all the donors who really uh, accompanied it, accompanied it for many years. In particular, Marilyn and Jim have been uh, fantastic to help us at uh, many stages, in particular in this final stage with the extraordinary donation of uh, Claire Lise and Philippe Tondeur to match it and really make it possible if you adopt the two contributions to really have a stable funding for a permanent professor position, which uh, they decided will bear my name. Thank you very much.